Well, it's been a long time coming, but the satisfactory mods are updated for update three. So we're gonna be flying, we're gonna be moving, we're gonna be grooving, and making an insane amount of progress as well. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time, we cleaned up our Mark 1 and Mark 2 starter bases, and generally our entire world in fact, so that now we can operate out of our hypertube stations, and in general out of our actual main base. So now we don't have to run around in the filth any longer. Oh man, and speaking of filth, we had our hub with some weird like setup in the last episode, and oh my gosh, I got so many comments about how to improve it, which were so good. So now we have like this middle foundation pillar that's like see-through for more detail. I added a bit more heft to the platform here, so it's not as skinny. And also, I added in a few of the pillar middles, so that we can put statues on top of them later on. So now our hub is going to have the absolute best place in the base. So thank you guys for the feedback. And also, preemptive thank you for leaving a like. Anyway though, now with our power situation dealt with, our base all organized, uh, what do we do now? <laughs> and the answer is, we consume. We consume everything. All of the resources that are out and around this desert, we will inhale them into our base and start the great processing, brother. Oh, the great processing. All the nodes that you see everywhere, just sitting around doing nothing. Well, all of them will be brought back to base, organized in our massive warehouse area, and then we'll start bringing all those items up to the top of our base and start processing them eventually into super computers and turbo motors and the like. And it will be glorious. But before we do, we kind of have some big chores in the way, and that is filling in like this upper layer of walls throughout the rest of the base. Because we only have like the front done and everything else is pretty bare. And now that we're bringing all these like supply lines up, we're gonna need our design in place so we can bring everything up in a neat and organized way. So I'll see you in a little bit. Oh my god, before the boop, I was but a boy. I didn't understand what I was saying. I didn't know. I just didn't know, brother. Oh my god. It's been so many days. Well, in-game, it, but it's been so many hours, IRL, to get this beast up to speed, but my god, we've done it. We've done it. All of the freaking walls now are complete up to the same level as the front of the base. But it is all worth it because now we are pretty much ready to go. And also, I have to tell you guys, but uh, we are now playing in a semi-modded playthrough here because after spending about five, I think it was five hours finishing up one of these walls, I was like, no, no. So I went ahead and downloaded the area actions mod and used that to help build. Because without it, this literally would have taken 18 hours. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. So it's either you get a video or I use the area actions mod. So yeah, went and got that. Uh, for those unfamiliar, the area actions mod allows you to like copy and paste some things and do a variety of other things. So it's really handy when you're doing like super, super repetitive work like making, you know, 10,000 walls or giant platforms. Etc. Etc. But yeah, what you have to do is go to the fixit.app website, link in the description, download Sasactory Mod Loader 2.0. There's a super omega good menu for that now. And you just install mods from there. And we got the area action. It automatically unlocks. You go to the equipment workshop, it's right in the bottom there. And boom, just put that in your hand, and you're good to go. You right click, and it has a ton of cool things here, including enabling us to fly. And flying, pretty dang neat brother. Because now we can get all those crazy cool views of our base. Oh my gosh though, this is gonna help so much for screenshots. Brother, it's gonna be intense. But it's really, really nice. Uh, though many of you are probably wondering, Oh no, Kibitz is just gonna spam this mod for everything. And no, don't worry, I'm not gonna use that. In season two, we're going fully modded. But here I want to really stick to vanilla. So if I'm showing something off like this, 
We'll use the area actions mod to fly around and check it out. Or if there's like 10 plus hours of wall filling in we have to do, or floor filling in we have to do, we'll use the area actions mod as well. You can set it to actually use items when you copy and paste. So like you copy just by making a selection square essentially. So boom, 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 boom. And there's a button to use the build cost. And when you copy and paste then, it'll use the items from bins in your world to recreate whatever you're copying and pasting. So we did pay the price for everything, we just saved hours, literally hours of our lives. And also since we have it up here, just a super quick, that's how you make a selection, copy and paste, you change the X, Y, and Z axis, so, I don't know, let's say this as 100 in the X axis, we'll move it up like 50 meters, we can preview it, we can hide this menu, and we can fly around and see what we copied and pasted. So it is pretty dang handy. This is just a preview though. You'd have to paste to location to confirm it there, or you can just close it and it's gone. And then to clear this out, you just press clear, and there you go. You can also make a huge selection, and you can mass dismantle it. So you delete the whole thing. This is like a one-stop shop though, so be careful with that, obviously. Because you can do some pretty crazy things like select the entire map, and then mass dismantle the entire map. Which, um, would be bad. But you can mess around with that stuff yourself. For now though, we are done with the area actions thing. We're not going to be using it much at all, so don't worry about that again. Again, we're sticking mainly vanilla here, and we'll only use it in the scenarios I described. Anyway though, we have much to do. So we are going to start absorbing all of the stuff from around the world and bringing it to base. So if you see a node, like that boy over there, we're gonna bring it to base, all of them. And then once we get it to base, we're gonna bring it to this floor here and we're gonna start our basic smelting and constructing. So like the stage one type stuff. So for example, can we make a crafting table? That'd be fantastic. Craft bench. There we go. So like the iron ingots, the keytarium ingots, and none of this, and then um, what else? I guess concrete, because we don't smelt it, we just have to assemble it. And then probably some silica as well. Silica and quartz crystals. And yeah, that's gonna be like tens of thousands of items. So we might even have to bring this up even higher. But we'll see. Uh, right now, we can fill in another floor at this level, and at this level, and at this level. So that's like one, two, three, four floors. That will pretty much be smelters. It's gonna be nuts. But I have a really cool idea for how we're gonna set them all up, so don't worry. Mm, it's gonna be spicy, spicy. Spicy, spicy indeed. There's a reason why the floors aren't filled in, by the way. Very good reason. But anyway, some of you might be wondering, Kibitz, why are you using smelters? Because there's some spicy stuff out there that we could do instead of smelting the ore. We can use refineries, and then we can use these recipes. The pure ingot recipes. Ho 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 ho! So with this, we can gather water, have a little bit of copper ore, run it through a refinery, and we pretty much, no, we do more than double the amount of resources. So from 15 copper ore to 37.5. That is huge. Absolutely insane. But it comes of course with the great cost. You need a ton of water, number one. And then of course we'd have to build literally thousands of more refineries. And we're already gonna be building so many for oil. So I don't really wanna do that. The only resources we're really gonna quote unquote ore double are the pure keytarium ingots, because keytarium's pretty hard to come by, along with quartz, because quartz is an extremely rare resource, generally speaking, in the world. Mm-hmm, these rate, okay. I didn't realize, but the ratios are a little bit different here. 67.5, 37.5, okay. We'll look into that more later, once we actually get everything here. But yeah, only the keytarium, only the quartz, everything else, we're just gonna leave it be. At least for now, while we're in the desert. Once we have trains, it might be a different story. Because, oh my goodness, we already have so much stuff in the desert, we don't even need to double it. Like, realistically. So, we're off on satisfactorycalculator.com here. This just has a satisfactory map. It's very, very handy. 
because there's a bunch of stuff on the side here, like hard drives, and that allows you to see like hard drives on the map, so it's really handy to gather them, along with pretty much everything else in the game. But for our purposes today, we can check to see all of the nodes that are in the desert. And again, this is why we're not ore doubling just yet, because we have this much to deal with in the desert. And unless you're blind, you can see that that's a lot, brother. That's a lot. Because all of these green icons, they represent pure nodes. The uh, orange ones are normal nodes and the red ones are impure nodes. We're gonna leave the impure nodes alone, but anything that's normal or and of course pure, we're gonna be scooping and bringing to base. And I guess one exception is the impure coal nodes. We want those too. Because oh man, our steel production is gonna get... <laughs> Uh, you'll see, you'll see. Okay, but back to the game world here. After checking out that map, I have come to a realization that our current method of bringing items up into our bees, I don't think is gonna work out too well. Like at all. <laughs> There's just so many freaking items and the way we're bringing things up right now is just really inefficient, if I'm gonna be real. It looks good, but oh, it's just, not good. Because right now the system is, we bring an item in, it goes into the one of the feet, like, I guess support pillars of our bees, and then inside this support pillar, it goes up a little elevator, right? That is just above here. And then from the support pillars, it kind of bridges the gap in between in this area here to these support pillars, and then everything goes up and away. And that, that's just too many clicks, man. That's like one elevator, this crossing part, and then another elevator over here, and it's just, it's just not good. <laughs> it's just not good. So we're gonna be switching things up, and we're gonna be building spines. Yes. So if you're unfamiliar with uh, spine projects, essentially, they're like efficient item elevators. So what we do is get these two conveyor walls, right? We put those down. We go up 11 wall segments, and then we add in another wall conveyor, and once we do that, we can make a item lift, or conveyor lift, sorry, that goes all the way up, max distance, and connects perfectly to that wall. And then we repeat this pattern as much as we need to. And this is very, very quick and efficient. And since we're bringing like thousands of items around into our base, we're gonna have to do this, 100%. And kind of the question is, how? How do we exactly do this? And what I'm thinking is we kind of have a, a bit of a system that's similar to this and with the spine system, where we have everything enter these support pillars, but then instead of having this like go across and then up again part, we just keep going up. So from these pillars will sprout huge, massively tall columns that end up going over into our base at certain points. And it's I think that would look really, really cool. Because like I had shown earlier, our hub kind of does the exact same thing. It kind of pops up outside of our base on top of one of the big supports, and it looks great. Like I really like the dynamic this adds to the base. Just adds like something at least, because the sides and our patterns all kind of look the same, so this adds a little bit of spice, and it's extremely practical. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing. Ooh, by the way, since we're over here, check this out. This is the design on this side of the base. I just left it open so we could see all of the industrial storage buffers, and ho ho, don't they look good, brother? You better believe it. But again, yeah, that's just gonna look exceptionally cool, just to have random pillars going up and bridges everywhere, and they're all gonna be different heights too, or at least, most of them will be, because there'll be bridges that go to like the smelter and constructor floor, some that go like way up higher, like the caterium and coal, to a foundry floor, etc, etc, and it, it, it's just gonna be great. And then, in between floors, we can have belts going up and down through this space, like we've planned before, along with all the hyper tubes and pipes and the whatnot. But enough of that though, we gotta get back to it. Essentially, we have to do this. We have to have every miner go to something like this, go to one of the pillar bases, and then come up. So, lots to do yet. So we better get started. 
Oh, wait, 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 there's a huge problem I didn't think of. Oh my god. I was getting my inventory all together for this, right? And we have to make all of the miners, and, oh, I didn't think about this at all. We have nowhere near enough power shards for a project like this. Like, for all of the resource nodes in the desert, like 138 divided by 3, because that's how many uh, power shards most of them will need is 46. Ah, that's pretty good, but like, there's a hundred nodes in the desert. Oof. Okay. Okay. So, that's a problem. So to get more power shards, we'd need more sluggo boys. So we could go on a sluggo hunt for like, 200 right now, but I don't want to do that. I want to like, get production started, of course. Or we make a lizard, a lizard doggo farm, but lizard doggo farm would take forever. Like, they have, like, a 5% chance to get a slug, so we can't do that either. Oh, uh, hmm, yes, quite. Okay. Okay. I think we need some kind of, like, intermediate goal then. Instead of collecting, like, every resource in the world right now, we gotta, like, chill. A little bit. Okay, uh, well, hmm. I guess then... A really good intermediate goal to build like our systems and get things moving and grooving here would be to automate all of the manufacturing things. So right now over here we have temporary manufacturers making the heavy modular frames, computers, and crystal oscillators. Yeah. So we just want to automate these to like the lowest degree. So we'd have like just say one manufacturer making computers at one a minute and we have the inputs for that. And then same with the heavy modular frames, and then of course the same with the crystal oscillators. Is there anything else though we'd need? Well, you're gonna need plastic then. Oh, in mon- oh, space elevator stuff. We're not gonna mess with space elevator stuff yet for the foreseeable future. There's also uh, uh, noblists we could make in manufacturers. We're gonna do that as like a separate project as well. And then motors too. Okay, yeah, this is a good idea. Then we don't get like super overwhelmed as well. Just like, oh my gosh, we need every item in the world right now. Yeah, this is really good. Really, really good. So we'll do that. We're not gonna get everything, but we're gonna get most things. We're gonna start building our systems, get the infrastructure rolling. So when we scale it up more, it won't be as difficult. So where are my boys? Come with me. And yeah, now we'll go out and scoot. Oh, but, and I got some really stellar news here, but most, I'd say a majority of the nodes are actually pure, so they only need the two power shards. I didn't put miners on the impure nodes, so we didn't have to bother with them. And yeah, we actually ended up having enough power shards for most of the miners here. Well, I say most, I mean literally all of them actually. Yeah, all of the normal and pure nodes that I have been able to scoop up. So that is really, really, really good. So now, the whole big shebang is gonna be bringing everything back to base. So, more concrete, more memes, and more work. Well, like everything today, I have horrifically underestimated the amount of time it would take to get all of the items in the entire desert. Go figure, eh? And, <laughs> it's just not gonna happen today. I'm gonna be real. I got our first six lines here, so that's about 300 iron, some limestone, copper, coal, and more limestone. And I brought it back on this six lane highway of belts. And brought it all the way up to here. So this goes to our processing floor. And yeah, no, this takes forever. My gosh. <laughs> And also, I guess, you know, I guess it's a better idea to check out what one of these elevators would look like, get some feedback from you guys, and see if we should continue along this path. So I know I said I wouldn't use this for the rest of the episode, but my god, is it good for showing things to you guys. But, let's just fly around our first little spine. So, it's a little weird, but pretty much everything goes into the foundation here goes right on through, and then up to there. And I've made it so it's see-through. So it's a little bit more detailed, a little bit more spice to be seen. And I added in all these foundation support things to kind of like 
tie it together, you know? Because I didn't want it just to be one boring pole of these metal walls and then up and down and then big silver column. Nah. I wanted to try something a little different. And you know, maybe we could add in like some pillar middle parts as well. I'm not sure. You know what? I literally just thought of this. What if we did that? I think it's gonna be too much. Just going on a whim here. Yeah, it's too much. I don't know. Uh, you guys let me know and maybe even send me a picture on Twitter for something simple we can do. But remember, this is gonna be a one tile design, so there's not all too much we can do. All right, but enough of that. Let's get to what I've been looking forward all day to work on. And that is our processing floor. Like, it's a blank canvas. There's so much we can do. We can do everything. All the things. It's gonna be sick, man. So what do we got here? We got coal, copper, some iron, and limestone. Well, I'll be honest, straight off the bat here, I don't think we're gonna be using the coal on this floor. We'll probably need a whole nother floor for that nonsense. But the rest we can absolutely do something with. And oh, you guys remember the foundry design we made? Well, I've had this idea for the smelters for so long that I'm extremely excited to build for you guys. So first off, let's make sure we have a little bit of space here in between the wall and the room we're about to build. And my idea here, although not fully realized yet, is to try and make just an epic just truly epic hallway of smelters. So say we're way back here, we'd look down this way and it's like, it would look like infinite smelters. Just infinite. That's the dream idea that we're gonna try and figure out how to do. So yeah, if we just have a few of these guys on here, we're gonna be off to the races already because we have all the room underneath to mess around with. Also, these foundations are perfect because there's this little gap right in the middle. So what we have to do is for the look of it, I don't want a lot of belts in front here. Like I don't want to see any of the inputs or outputs. I just want to see uh, smelters as far as the eye can see. So what we can do is just have the outputs go through the bottom of the platform, merge together and scoot. So that'll look pretty good. It seems then if we're going that route, we're going to have to do something on the back end here. like. Just long conveyor belts where resources will enter the system. And you know what? We're gonna have to move this a little bit further in too. And then we'll build this as far back as we can. Which is about there. Ah, uh, it's a little... It's a little weird. But it works out. Okay, and then the same thing. You know what? Yeah, let's actually just start by building one of these modules and then we can stack it. So we'll do that. Then we'll have the merger underneath. And I'll just keep going that way. And then this can connect through there. Yes, it can. Good. Big issue would be stacking this design. So how does it measure up? Could we build a floor directly over top? It looks like we actually could. Oh my gosh, we could. Would you look at that? We might have already got it. So then this then could go right up there and we can just copy the same design up above and the whole thing just begins again. And also, you know what? I'm gonna switch this up a little bit. We're gonna have the mini foundation so the floor up above can be the two meter one. That'll make the floor building a lot more smooth. So that's cool. And now we also have to worry about the inputs here. So what we're gonna do is the overflow method. We're gonna do it in our weird way. And that's where we're gonna have the system overflow from both ends. So we have 10 smelters now here, and this will handle a 300 line of iron ore. So half of it will overflow from this direction, the other half from the other direction. But that will take up an entire platform of space, and that doesn't seem very efficient. So I'm wondering what we could do here to save space. And one thing, what we could do, is we could have the mergers and the splitters under here. And you know what? At the end of the day, I think it's just gonna take the same amount of space. Like it's gonna take the full other platform back here to actually fit it in. Because what we'd have to do then is have the splitter like back here. Or something like that. Probably right in the middle like here. And then split behind all of the conveyor lifts. So half of it goes over this way, enters the system through here, 
yeah, it just uses all that space, right? And just to visualize, like, the issue that's happening here a little bit better, this is a representation of all the space we're effectively using. Because the first bit here will have to all be for the smelters. And then we have that splitter and the, what is it, the conveyor lifts. So that's pretty much these guys done. And then I suppose we have these two spaces, which, yeah, there's just nothing to do with them. Ooh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. No, 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 no. We want to continue with the pattern we're using, because something I always forget about is the power, of course. And I like using power poles, they're really convenient. And yeah, we just have these now in this space. So it better utilizes everything. And this can fit right behind here, of course. It can go through there. A little bit of clipping, so we just move it around a bit. But yeah, 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 yeah. This space can be used for the power poles now. Oh, that's so much better. Good, 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 good. Okay, I'm happy. So now, I'll rebuild this system right nudged up in the corner there. And we'll copy it here and on another side, leaving a bit of space in between. And from there, we can start to lay out more of the room. All right, oh man, all that messing around was worth it because, whoa, this is pretty much the look I was after, brother. It's just infinite smelters down the line. Oh, it looks really, really cool. Works really, really well. There's plenty of space to move and groove lines all about. So this should be, yeah, just fantastic. And I was doing a little bit more planning and everything kind of works out perfectly. Well, <laughs> it can't kind of be perfect. It is actually perfect. So I've measured this out. It is about seven tiles like long and there is just enough space to leave a tile here and put this entire setup right beside, right in here. So we could have four, or well, not four, but like, we can have this setup again right beside it. And there'll be a little extra space between the power junction area as well. So it's perfectly spaced there. So that's what we're gonna do with this half of the room. We're gonna have two of these spelter arrays on each side of our power junction area. And then, I've added in some refineries. And like with the smelters, things work out too. Because I was looking at the recipes here, uh, at least for Caterium right now, and you need 24 Caterium to make the pure ingot here. Well, and some water. And 480 divided by 24 equals 20. And centered along this room, we have 40 refineries. So, like, the numbers work out perfectly. We can get two 480 lines up into here. <laughs> Only two though. You, you start to see why I don't really want to deal with the refined or pure iron, right? Because, whew, this is only two 480 lines. It's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. But like I said, it's centered. So we have 20 refineries there, 20 refineries over there, and it's all centered right with the center of our base. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. And then we're gonna have a little bit of dead space here and behind the power junction area. And what we're gonna do there is we're just gonna have a bunch of industrial storage buffers for water. And the water will go into all these. Boom. Great plan. You better believe it. Except there's only one other thing. The constructors. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no room for constructors. We do have a bit of empty space in between the smelters there and the refineries. So, technically speaking, we could make a big row of them right through here. And I, I don't really want to do that. I kind of want to leave this space empty for moving and grooving all the lines all over the place. So I'm thinking, I've measured out the floor there, and we can fit a floor here. And yeah, what I'm thinking is just having a floor above all of this that is just constructors. Like, that is it. Constructors across the land. Because we're gonna need quite a few of them for... Actually, wait a second. How many constructors do we really need? Hold up. What do we have to make in constructors here? Well, quick wires for later. Quartz crystals will be refined. And then just concrete, eh? Maybe then we do fill the center of the room with constructors. Oh, and silica as well. Oh wait, no, 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 we don't want to make silica here. Because wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have an alternate silica recipe. 
the cheap silica, right? Yeah, I think we combine it with limestone. Yep, quartz, limestone, cheap silica. So the only thing we'd really want constructors for then is just the concrete. And we don't need a ton of that either. So looking at the room layout then, I definitely want to block off this area and make it its own like special thing. So we'd have a wall there. We need quite a bit of space over here too. Lots of pipes moving and grooving and, and that's going to get crazy. So that'd be nice to have. And then this is a decent chunk of space. One, two, three, four, five tiles. Okay. And then with constructors, just for concrete, we could easily stack these up. Usually they work in groups of three. Well, at least that's the most convenient. Because the concrete takes 45 each. Well, no, we'd have to think about a 480 line. And what's the lowest common multiple between 45 and 480? Oh, wait a second. No, we don't even need to worry about a lowest common multiple between 45 and 480 because we can just change the clock speed. So game plan then is we change the clock speed on all these and just make a row just like this all the way down the room. And then double stack it too, similar to the smelters. Right on, and then we can move this wall a little bit forward, so it's right up next to this walkway here. And then with this tile, we can have all of the limestone coming in and moving over to all of the setups. Wow, I think this is perfect! And also, I am wildly happy with how much progress we made in today's video! However though, this has taken an insane amount of time, and we're gonna have to finish this off in the next episode. So. If you guys enjoyed, please remember to leave a like, and I hope to see you in the next one. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye. <laughs>